If we say that we are fasting the real month, then yes, we may consider the issue of astronomical uh, astronomy and the calculation, etc. But we are talking about two different domains. So, uh, no link between both. Now the question is, many people will ask, what is your proof that what you are saying is that you have two months, the Shari month and the astronomical month. So, as we have two types of months, the Shari month, as well as the Haqiqi month. Because even in Lugha Arabiya, like as salah linguistically means something. Shari, it means something else. So, there might be a link between both, but not necessarily the Shari meaning is exactly as the uh, linguistic meaning. Here is the same thing. The Shari month is not necessarily the same as the real month, the real astronomical month. The people will ask, what is the proof? How do you prove that? We can prove it by the following. First of all, uh, the hadith, First when you see the month, end your fast when you see the new month, and if you can't see it because of cloud, because of dust, because of other natural factors, then what do you do? Complete the count of Sha'ban 30 days. While in reality, the month, the real month of Ramadan may have started yesterday. I hope that is clear. Yet, the Sharia did not bother about the real month of Ramadan. The Sharia bothered about something else. The effective cause in the beginning, the effective cause in the announcement of the start of the month of Ramadan is totally different from the effective cause of announcing the real astronomical month. This is one thing. The other delil is that when the Prophet وسلم, during that time he said to the people Sumu li ru'yati wa aftiru li ru'yati In one case Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said tara an-nas al-hilal ala ahdi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa akhbartu an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anni ra'aytuhu fa qala qum ya Bilal fa'adhin bin-nas an yasumu ghada and the other hadith, when the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ uh, asked people to uh, sight the moon, and then a Bedouin came. And he told the Prophet ﷺ that he sighted the moon. And that Bedouin, even the Prophet ﷺ didn't know him. The Prophet ﷺ asked him, Atashadu an la ilaha illallah, Atashadu anni rasulullah. He said yes, then he announced the month. Is, let me ask you a question. Is there any possibility that this Bedouin uh, made a mistake? There is a high possibility that this Bedouin made a mistake. There is a high possibility that this Bedouin confused or was confused about Pluto, as they say these days, and the new moon. When we tell this to people, they immediately they respond that Bedouin, we know Bedouin knew astronomical uh, phenomena uh, and they know these natural things and they know the sky, moons and uh, stars etc. Yes, we know that. So we ask them, if we come up with a conclusion, do you agree that if a Bedouin came who knew about these issues, these stars, moon, etc. Are you going to accept his witnesses, his testimony? If you claim that this was the case of the Bedouin at that time of the Prophet ﷺ. So, there is a high possibility that this Bedouin made a mistake. But we tell people, if you come up with a conclusion that those Bedouin in Saudi Arabia, that you always accuse them, they know about the astronomy and about the stars, etc. Would you still accept their testimony? They will say no. Because what? Because astronomical facts are against their 
uh, citing. So, don't say when we tell you that uh, Ibn Umar may made a mistake and or the other Bedouin may made a mistake, uh, don't say that, yeah, those Bedouin, uh, they knew about the moon sighting and they will not be confused about moon and Pluto or other stars. Don't say this. Say it clearly that we don't accept that unless astronomical facts approve that the moon can be visible. So, the issue is Ibn Umar or the other Bedouin may have done a mistake. Still, with that possibility, there, even if they knew about astronomy and uh, uh, stars, etc., they may have done a mistake. But the Prophet wasallam guided us to follow that. And the Prophet wasallam announced the month based on this. So, the Prophet wasallam is teaching us to accept that as a premises for his time and for any time after his time. The Prophet ﷺ could have indicated in that hadith that yes, if we double check or if we, uh, we need to double check or we need to have other uh, facts to support your uh, testimony. No, the Prophet ﷺ did not say this. Now, some people say that, but the Prophet ﷺ at that time there were no astronomicals, etc. No, who said so? There were astronomical since long time ago. This is known. Even the Arabs, they are known uh, to have this astronomical calculation, etc. And this is one thing. The other thing, brothers and sisters, we have to be careful. Not everything, when it comes to us uh, these days, and we say, yes, we don't do it these days as it has been done before, because these days are different from before, and before they did not have this knowledge, etc. We say that this is very, very dangerous. And we have two extremes in this. One extreme that does not accept any changes in the original uh, textual evidences or the interpretation of the textual evidence. No uh, room for any interpretation or for new uh, implementation. And on the other hand, the other extreme that almost abolish all uh, the textual uh, evidences because of what? Because of the a new context that we are living in. Both are wrong. And forget about the first extreme. Let us talk about the second extreme. If we say, for example, brothers, that we make wudu to clean our limbs, but these days our limbs are clean. At that time, people used to work in farms and they used to walk in the desert, etc., etc., so their limbs get dirty easily. But these days, it's hardly people get their limbs uh, dirty as such. So maybe it is enough to have one wudu uh, and that's it. Everyone will disagree with this analogy. Everyone. They will say, no, this is a matter of ibadah. Wudu is different. No, it is not a matter of only ibadah. It is not a matter of wudu is different. It is a matter of illa. What is the effective cause for making wudu? If the effective cause of making wudu, if the illa of making wudu, something that we knew and we can build on, then we can change wudu accordingly. Same thing. But if wudu is not based on illa, on a certain illa, that we know and the illa is changing, then we cannot change wudu. Same thing here. If the moon sighting and depending on uh, visual uh, and natural moon sighting is dependent on a illa that we know, then and that illa changes, then we can change the issue of moon sighting. If it is taken as such and there is no effective cause, there is no illa behind it, then we cannot change it. So, what is the effective cause in the issue of announcing the month of Ramadan? And once, what is the effective cause in announcing the end of Ramadan? The effective cause is not the reality of the month, as we said, but it is something else, something else which takes us to the issue of the Shar'i moon and not the real month. This is another thing that proves that we are looking for a month that is different from the real month, the real astronomical month. 